show started out. You feeling good about that? Yes. I love you guys. This is going to be an outrageous show. Famous guests are going to be filtering in and out. It's going to be madness. This is the third Evil Men live recording. Uh, it just might be the very best. They're all amazing. Keep that energy going because this is a theater, so it's meant to like muffle the sounds of like, ow, 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 right? Like it's a theater, like, right? So give all of that loud energy, those loud sounds, because you don't get to just sit back and listen tonight. You're in the podcast. Sorry, you were put, put, putting you to work. So give all that energy and please, please welcome with a huge, long ass round of applause. The hosts of Evil Men, the fabulous James Hartnett, Chris Locke, and Michael Barraza! Hey, hey. Oh my God. What's up? Hello. Thanks for coming. What the hell? <laughs> yeah, what the hell? <laughs> oh my God. Guys, thank you so much for coming tonight. This is so exciting. Now, um,. So before we get going, we do There's have been a screw up. Yeah. <laughs> we do have some bad news. Um, obviously, the podcast is Chris and me and Mantis, Mike Balazzo. <laughs> and um, you guys probably know Michael Mantis has been traveling to England a lot, right? And uh, he was kind of going back and forth, right? <laughs> some would almost say going in and out. Yeah, well, <laughs> some might say. Going in and out, in and out, <laughs> to the UK and back. Right, right. Lucky guy, eh? <laughs> <laughs> so, Mike was supposed to fly back today. Yeah. And the fucking guy, he missed his flight. He's... I know. Don't tell him, uh, but I know we're recording this, but he's such an idiot, eh? <laughs> this is such a big deal for us. I know. So I'm sorry. We will keep going on with the show, yeah. but there's, there's no mic tonight. Yeah, he, he didn't yeah. make it from England. So. Uh, yeah. What oh the my hell? God, do you hear that? <laughs> oh, my God, Mike. What in the hell? He made it. Mike is here. Wow. That's Mike. Chris. <laughs> you, you've changed. And James. And my beloved audience. It's... <sighs> I made it to the performance. What happened? I thought you missed your flight. Yeah, what the hell happened? Flight? Oh, brother, I've got quite a story to tell. <laughs> As some of you might know, I've been going to England a lot lately. Some might say going back and forth. Ha <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> and I assumed being a podcaster gave a guy certain perks. Right. Uh, namely, I thought that British Airways allowed uh, priority check-in because I'm a VIP. Doctors, lawyers, podcasters. Oh, no, huh? I couldn't have been more wrong, guys. <laughs> Not only couldn't I priority check in, they wouldn't even let me on a goddamn plane. So let me ask you then, what the fuck happened? <laughs> well, desperate times, Chris. <laughs> I had to send a string of texts, emails, and faxes until uh, I ended up getting here. I, I, I flew back from England on the Sonar Podcast Network's private jet. Wow! Oh, nice, right, I forgot. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 they do have that. I'm pretty sure we're on Sonar. <laughs> yeah, we are, yeah, 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 <laughs> I think. Well, Mike, wow, that's amazing. It's amazing. Yes. <laughs> it's yeah, yeah. Oh, it's so good to see you guys once more again. Good to yeah. see you. Should we yeah. hug or something? Uh, sure. All right. <laughs> Great to be here. <laughs> <laughs> if you want. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of 
Evil Man! I'm sitting down. You want to sit down? Yeah. All right. Ah, that's a seat. <laughs> Beautiful. So, um, you know, very nice to see all you guys. There's happy faces here. I see Teddy yes. and Billy and <laughs> Susie and all kinds of weird <laughs> freaks. <laughs> you know, uh, before we get to the evil man and all that, you know, it might be worth pointing out that, uh, gosh, summer, it's almost over, oh, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> it's so true, James. I just thought it's a thing to point out. Nothing you know? gold can stay. And, um, yeah. Yeah. Summer's nearly wasted once more. It's um, sad because I was enjoying all the fires and floods and we'll probably only have fires and floods in the autumn and winter and spring now, too. <laughs> yeah. Before yeah. you know it, it'll be Christmas floods. <laughs> <laughs> What's under the Christmas tree this year? Oh, fire. Yeah. I wish that damn flood would come back. Yeah. <laughs> and put out grandpa. <laughs> Wash him away, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. But it's so true. The summer just has seemed to, to have just zipped by this year. Yeah. You know? I know. I, I do have... Do, maybe we should... Be, it would be fun to talk about, like, our favorite summer memories, you know? Oh, I would go crazy if we did that. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well... Mike, why don't you go first? You know, we've got all our friends here, our, our do. beautiful listeners. Why don't, why don't you, you know, what's your favorite summer memory? We, we've got all of our friends here and we're sit back very far and cautiously yeah. away from them. Should we move this? I mean, maybe it'll mess up the lights. No. We could move them forward. Everything is as it should be. <laughs> uh, we got a professional to measure this distance <laughs> earlier. <laughs> but summer memories, hey, that's the game we're playing? Yeah. Are right. you going to go crazy or what? Yeah. With words. <laughs> my uh, most beautiful summer memory, aside from the feeling of sunlight on my skin and uh, the cool breeze off of Lake Ontario on my mm, skin, yes. <laughs> and taking showers in my apartment and feeling the water on my skin, would be I recently went on a brother's trip to Montreal, Quebec, to see the band of senior citizens named Metallica. <laughs> nice. And it was a beautiful trip. We had looked forward to it so much, and it was just a great opportunity for us to bond with 65,000 uh, French-Canadian metalheads. <laughs> and the porta toilets they had there, un unholy. <laughs> Awful. The worst uh, pisses I've ever taken in my life. <laughs> yeah, but, but still in a nice summer uh, memory way. No, that's really nice, Mike. I'm you, happy for you guys. That is cool. You know, they filmed the video for The Unforgiven in the bottom of a uh, porta potty. <laughs> <laughs> that old man was walking around just shaking hands, going, like, Remember me? <laughs> there was a very skinny old man in the video for The Unforgiven <laughs> by Metallica. Yeah, He's in probably the 90s. common reference. I yeah, think yeah. Everyone would He's know. probably long dead. <laughs> but I wonder if the members of Metallica even bothered to go to his funeral. <laughs> Great question. They better have. Oh, yes. Well, you know, um, I, I would say, like, my favorite summer memory. Do you have a summer memory, James? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do, actually. Um, you know what? I went to uh, actually a Blue Jays game with my oh. fiance and, uh, and my nephews. And, you know, they'd, I'd never been to a game with my nephews before. I bonded with them. And so it was, a, it was a magical uncle moment. Yes. I finally got to live that uncle life. And uh, it was really nice, and uh, it was fun. We watched the game. I got him hot dogs, you know. Mm, it yum. was really fun. A classic summer memory. Yes. What the hell? Yeah. yeah. Well, what about you? Do you have a summer memory, Chris? Your favorite memory before the summer ends? Yeah, Chris. Oh, uh, I do have a summer memory, guys. Do you want to hear it? Yeah, well, sure. Yes. It's pretty good. That lady's leaving already. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. I understand. Sorry we're not the evil men you're looking for. 
Well, there's a lot going on in Bloor Court Village tonight. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? There's a lot of more evil men. Uh, yeah, in Dufferin Grove, if you want. Yeah. Well, my summer memory. Uh, okay, honestly. Evil Men is uh, gaining traction. We do have fans now, you understand? Yeah, yeah. thank you, yeah. thank you. It's very nice. Yeah. yeah, all right. Anyways, listen to this. I'm walking down the busy summer street, and uh, as you guys know, post-pandemic, Toronto's back in action. It's busy, it's lively, it's happening. As Mick Jagger said at Sarstock, Toronto's back, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that? Yeah. Yeah, what a time. I saw a video of him performing recently, and he does a squat at the end of the stage, and then there's a bar there that he uses to get back up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not joking. <laughs> <laughs> he goes like this. And an acorn stairlift brings Keith Richards down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Keith Richards comes down in a chair slowly from the, <laughs> <laughs> from the side of the stage. <laughs> like the lady from Gremlins. Which one of us will die next? <laughs> um, so anyways, like the Rolling Stones also said, I can't get no satisfaction. And I'm walking down the sidewalk and a tiny horde of Evil Men fans, I don't know if some of them are you, see me and they go, isn't that Chris Locke uh, from Evil Men? And I hear them go, no, yes. Anyways, um, <laughs> they reach the consensus that yes, and then they start chasing me. Like, I know we're talking about the Stones earlier, but they are starting chasing me like the Beatles, to be honest. Right. And I had to run. Anyways, I'm running and dodging and it's really busy and so I climb up this lattice on the side of a house <laughs> and I get to the second roof area uh, that's like basically the roof of a porch uh, down below and I'm standing on it and they're not going away. They're standing underneath it being like, Chris, I want some of your hair. I want, s s I want some of your summer clothes. I want pieces of you, you understand? They said you understand. It was. <laughs> I said, yes, I understand. I'm not going down there. I read you loud and clear. But as I'm backing away from the, uh, the, uh, the brood, the dangerous brood, uh, directed by Cronenberg, I uh, backed in through this busted-ass old window, and I fall into this dank, dusty room. The dust is flying in the sunlight. Oh I broke, yeah. It was like one of those closed shades that, uh, what is it, The uh, keeps out all the light. It was one of those. Seems like it hadn't been open in forever. And dust is flying around the room. Beams of sunlight are shining in. Wallpaper's very old. And, oh my uh, God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very old wallpaper. That's, wow. Wallpaper from quite a while ago. And dresser drawers that were old as well. Uh, you get what I'm saying? Right, o an old room. An old room, you understand. <laughs> <laughs> and behind me in this old room is a nice big lady who I seem to have woken her up as I crashed through the window and Wait. she's rubbing her eyes and going, huh? A nice big lady. A nice big lady was there. And uh, I, I don't know how much you want me to get into it. It's... Uh, anyways, as much as you feel comfortable with sharing, yeah, I mean, oh, summer memories. Yeah. Well, I tried to explain to her what was going on, but anyway, she gave me a BJ. <laughs> and that's your uh, summer memory. Yes, and then I had sex with her doggy style. <laughs> Okay, I mean, Mike was bringing up a thing with his brothers. I'm talking about a thing with my nephews. Yeah. Okay, but that's your main summer memory, I guess. Th mine's way better than <laughs> hanging out with nephews at a <laughs> ball game that everybody from Barry to Peterborough can go to. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> well, I mean, God. What's so special about yours? Well, you're 30 <laughs> men go with their nephews to a Jays game every day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, touche, touche. 
Oh, well, well, anyways. Thanks for sharing. Should we talk about what you are wearing tonight? Or. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you're listening only in the podcast recording, you won't <laughs> fully get to enjoy this section. But, Chris, yeah, how, how do I describe what you're wearing? A, the outfit that a uh, despicable pervert would wear <laughs> in a bush, in a bush <laughs> near a school or uh, <laughs> playground? <laughs> well, I don't have a job <laughs> right now. Okay. And, uh, yes, I was naked in the park earlier. <laughs> Okay, well, that's fine. And then I got a text, and I'm not going to tell you where I keep my phone. <laughs> and I said to an old man beside me, I said, quick, old man. <laughs> Stop making puppets down by the river. <laughs> that's what he was doing. What? <laughs> <laughs> he put his puppets down, and I said, give me your jacket. Okay. And here I am. So I just... Okay. It's not a big deal. I'm just wearing a weird old man's jacket. Are you saying you were keeping your phone in your asshole? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no judgment. It's fine. Thanks. No judgment. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, you know what I was thinking, guys? You look good, though. You look good. You do look good. Like. Well, we're, maybe we're we should talk shape. about what James is and you are wearing. <laughs> you guys are dressed like a, a bunch of guys with brothers and nephews. <laughs> Hey, not not cool, man. Not yeah, cool. That's low, Chris. Low blow. Low blow. I love my brothers. I love my nephews. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. I'm getting a BJ. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking nerds. Oh boy. <laughs> I think it's I think it's cooler to have a brother than a nephew. Gotta hey, say. Oh, Who's what with the me, hell, Mike? I thought. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Do we have any uncles in the crowd? <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, look at them. Look at them. <laughs> Are you an uncle, though, too, Chris? I don't know. <laughs> I think you're an uncle. I think I'm the only non-uncle on stage here tonight. <laughs> oh, now he does the non-uncle oh, wow. dance. Because w my brothers and I are determined to end our bloodline. <laughs> and we're not having kids. <laughs> For those listening at home, Mike just fully Andrew Lloyd Webbered it <laughs> in front of everybody. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, just joking. I think being an uncle is the most wonderful thing a man can do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, being an uncle is the greatest gift you could ever give your brother or sister. <laughs> That's what I'm giving uh, my brother or sister for Christmas, I guess. <laughs> The permission for them to have a baby. Yeah, mm -hmm. have a baby, I'll be the uncle, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you, everybody, for coming here tonight yeah. to our third ever live episode recording. Thank you. <laughs> and, you know, it's pretty cool because this is the first time we've done a show in a real theater. You know, it's kind of exciting. Yeah, yeah. this is wild. Yeah. What? Yeah. Well, it is kind of spooky. It's a theater. Yeah, exactly what you're saying, Chris. It's a beautiful theater, but it scares the goddamn living fuck out of me. <laughs> why? Why would? You, why are you guys scared of a theater? Think about it, James. So many scary things happen in theaters. A ghost story, Phantom of the Opera, River Dance. <laughs> okay, come on. You're worried about Phantom of the Opera? There are so many spooky... Th like This theater is probably like, I don't know... 900 years old? <laughs> Think of the spirits just like, you know, floating around wow. and there's just, I just get the icky sense that there's some sort of like uh, weird, I don't know, paranormal guy just sort of skulking around okay. in the shadows. There is really a creepy vibe here. There's yeah, a creepy I, vibe here. Do you guys I, feel the creepy vibe? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Y'all feel the creepy vibe tonight? <laughs> you feel the fucking creepy vibe! <laughs> Listen, oh, I promise you there's nothing creepy happening in this theater tonight. Relax. <laughs> oh, my God. Look up in the wings, everybody. Oh, shit. What the fuck? Oh. It's a phantom. Sorry. No. Uh, where? Holy crap. It's no. the phantom of the Paradise Theater. No, no. I'm not a phantom. I, I'm just an usher. Wow. What? 
If you're an usher, then why are you moaning so damn much? Oh, God, was I moaning again? Oh. Yeah, you were moaning so loud, it sounded Look, scary like a phantom. I'm so sorry, I have terrible anxiety. And sometimes it just leaks out. Oh. Well, that's not cool that you scared us. I mean, I'm really sorry. I do empathize with anyone who's suffering from anxiety, but Thank why you. are you feeling so anxious right now? I don't know. Just like, it's my first day working here, and like... It must be okay. really high pressure. <laughs> Well, wait a second. Why are you wearing a b big black cloak? Well, you know, it's my first day, and they said to dress nice, so. Why are you talking slash moaning into a microphone if you're supposed to be working? Microphone? Yeah, the thing that's in your hand. <laughs> I thought this was a chocolate ice cream. I feel embarrassed. You thought it was a chocolate ice cream? Yeah. Oh, dear. Yeah, but it makes sense now. My voice is amplified, so. This reminds me of like um, one of those Shakespearean comedies. Oh, yeah, I'm poor, uh, so funny. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, what, sorry. What's your name, young man? Uh, Edgar. Edgar. Um, I just want to say, and this goes for everyone here joining us tonight for the live performance. If you're feeling anxious mm -hmm. or mentally ill in any way, yeah. yeah, there's nothing shameful about reaching out and talking to an adult you trust or a trained professional. Okay. Well, I'm just kind of happy talking to you guys, if that's all right. Um, all right. Well, uh, we are sort of doing a, th a thing. But, um, okay, yeah. so, nice yeah. Nice to meet you. Uh, so you don't want to hear about uh, uh, the period between 1989 to 1992 where I was obsessed with this soft pocket on my mother's bathrobe? Uh, yeah, you know, uh, we're Is that where of, your anxiety uh, comes from? Yeah, I think so. But I would need to talk to somebody to find right. out. Uh, Edgar, I just thought of something cool. If you die tonight, you could actually become the phantom of this theater. Anyways, good luck. <laughs> Thanks. That's uh, yeah. Good luck. You know, just look. Google help. Uh, my brain is bad or whatever. And you know what? Even better. I'll wait for you guys in the green room after. I'll be uh, uh, the guy who is hiding in there. Have All you right. heard of our sponsor, TherapyBlast.com? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, Look it up. Well, thank Use you, Edgar. Use promo code Evil Men. <laughs> yeah. Th uh, th well, thank you, Edgar. And okay. You know, we'll, maybe we'll talk to you later. Yeah. Take Be care. I'll, um, best of luck or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much, Godai. <laughs> wow. Edgar, everybody. Wow. Up in the wings. Yeah. Um, that was really neat. That was cool. I didn't expect that. Also, do you guys know how we can lock the door to our green room? Uh, I don't want that. Jackie. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Um. So shit. Oh, what's next on the list? I know what it is. Uh, well, you're not just you just you didn't just win tickets to a live podcast recording because you you bought them. You also, by attending tonight, you won the opportunity to win a raffle prize. That's right. Did you get those little things? Yes. It's pretty sweet. Um, and should we tell them what the raffle? Did is? you bring it out? Or no? I didn't bring it okay, out. Okay, okay. <laughs> this will be big in the post-mortem tonight after the show. Yeah. Um, yeah, if, if we select your raffle ticket, you will be the winner of one bag of nutritional yeast. Does everyone here know... Do you all know what nutritional yeast is? Because I honestly don't really know what it is or what you use it's it It's fantastic. You put it on your popcorn. All the guys say nutritional... And all the ladies say yeast. <laughs> all right. Nutritional yeast. Guys. Nutritional ladies. Yeast. <laughs> we will, we will give you nutritional yeast. <laughs> so that's yeah. going to come up. If you, hold on. <laughs> Hold on to those raffle tickets. Yeah. Um, it kind of tastes like a cheese topping on your popcorn. Yeah. 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 Right? yeah. So 
Stay tuned and have your tickets in your little hands for the little the raffle we do soon. The worst thing ever would be if you lost it, oh and then God. your number is called and you don't get the baggie of nutritional yeast. <laughs> I'm picturing you, James, going at 2 p.m. to Bulk Barn to buy a big bag, and then uh, the the checkout lady just giving you the eye and going, hmm, wonder why he's buying this two big bags of nutritional yeast. <laughs> well, abs- you're absolutely right. It was quite an awkward situation. <laughs> <laughs> also, if your number is not called, don't lie and say your number was called. Come up here and punch us and take the bag of yeast. Yeah, yeah please don't do that. <laughs> So before we get to this week's topic of evil men, um, I believe a couple times tonight we're going to be joined by some historical figures. R- real life evil men are going to come yeah. on stage and like yeah. join us. And you have a chance. Yeah, yeah. That's so cool. That's. You'll have a chance to look at them up close, to see how they look, to see the you know their skin, to smell them, to <laughs> touch them and taste them. And I think if you want, yeah. and they are okay with it, yes. And I, do you guys feel that it's it's that time of the show that we should bring in our first? Let's bring out our first real life evil man. Yeah. All right. Are you guys ready for your first evil man? <laughs> All right. My heart. We're about to bring him out. My heart is going pit a pat. Oh, it's racing because uh, you got the vaccine. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, let's go ahead, and why don't, why don't we bring out our first evil man of the evening? Come on out, whoever you are! Oh, who is it? I wow, wonder who it welcome. is. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Wow. So, yeah, welcome. Who, who are you? Oh, you got to <laughs> flick the switch. Rookie mistake, rookie mistake. It is I, the godfather of Canadian groceries, Galen Weston Jr. Whoa! GWJ! 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 I don't like this at all. GWJ. Oh my God. Galen Wesson, the, cr- the owner of Loblaws, the Canadian grocery store. The one and only. Mr. Uh, Mr. Gouge, hardworking Canadians. Yeah. yeah. Oh, great nickname. Yeah. <laughs> so, how dare you show your face here in Blue Court Village tonight? Well, you know, you reach a certain point, like in any career, where you get a little controversial, or you know, you have people not like you or whatever, and that's fine. But um, yeah, people think you're a jerk, eh? I know, but. <laughs> Guys, I bought you presents. What? Oh, okay. What oh, the hell? Yeah. I think uh, I think I'm changing my mind about you, Galen. I'm you not ready? yet. Because here's the thing. You know what? I was like walking down Bloor Street today, right? I was following a North Star, right? You know? <laughs> and um, I was just looking for a new place to put a brand new shopper's drug mart, right? And I saw this beautiful theater and I saw that it was some sort of show with three men doing a wonderful podcast. And I thought to myself, I love podcasts. I listen to uh, Smartless. (laughs) And and, and, and I I, I looked it up on my phone and I I, I have PC mobile. I'm one of the few that has it still, right? We We have a couple left. I saw that these are three wise men, right? And it reminded me of the Bible, kind of, right? Like this story. And I thought, why don't I get three gifts for three wise men? Galen, you're making at least me blush. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, wow, these are huge. Thank you. What the hell? Amazing. Okay, wow. wow. We can just go ahead and take one? Yeah, take one. Okay, so I'll just take out of this bag. I line them up in order. Wow. Three beautiful gift bags. You want to see? Yeah. <laughs> ah. What do you guys think? Three shopping bags. Oh. Blah, blah. Oh, that's it. There's nothing inside of the... Okay. Okay. Well, thanks, Galen. But I mean... here's the thing. They're built to last. <laughs> right. They're big. Yeah, well, exactly. I got XLs, man. How many groceries can I fit in that thing? About five or 15. I don't know. <laughs> Do you buy your own groceries? 
every single day. <laughs> it's my passion, man. <laughs> oh, I love it. That's why I got into this business, man. Galen, I feel that as journalists, we'd be remiss not to sort of hold your feet to the fire yeah, tonight. Yeah, good okay. point, Mike. Now, a lot of Canadians are upset about, you know, the just constantly rising grocery prices yeah. in, your, in your grocery empire. What do you have to say to hardworking Canadians who are feeling the squeeze? Okay, everything's going up right now. We all know this, right? And here's the thing. Here's the thing I was, here's the thing I was thinking about today, right? You know? Well, you know how, like, you pay taxes every year or something, you yeah. <laughs> know? Well, you know sometimes, yeah. like, you think about, like, where your taxes are going, and, like, you're like, what, you know? Yeah. Like, it's going yeah. to this? Mm. Well, true. I believe, and I'm starting to do this, this is why I raise the prices, I believe that I can offer some law laws things for everyday Canadians of stuff that people actually want in Canada. So that's why I've been raising the prices. I have a whole new thing going on. But we actually want bread and chicken. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have some other better things up the pipeline. So you're spending this money on st other stuff yeah. that you think is good. Okay, Big so like, projects like coming what? out Yeah, like what? Yeah. Well, we're working on a Joe Fresh biopic. Joe Fresh Biopic. Now that, I, I would <laughs> genuinely love to see. Yeah. And can I, I ask, <laughs> just the idea of a Joe Fresh Biopic, who's going to play the famous fella? Christopher Lloyd. <laughs> wow. Christopher Lloyd. He's coming back. Really? Yeah. And, and not a moment too soon. He's, he's just uh, young enough to play Joe Fresh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Wow. <laughs> I always thought Joe Fresh looked like an old, decrepit man <laughs> crawling towards his grave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You guys Good. excited about that? Yeah. Yeah, Joe, Joe sure. Fresh biopic. I mean, wow. Yeah. 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 Oh. Well, what else, what else are you using this extra money for? Well, here's another thing. You know, we I, lots of little uh, tests people have found out about the Joe Fresh biopic, and we're gonna take it one step further after we complete that, and I'm thinking about doing a, a Loblaws streaming service. It's like Netflix, but Loblaws? Yeah, with original programming, too. <laughs> like, like what? Yeah, what are you gonna... Like shows about bananas? <laughs> well, one could say, yeah. One could say, yeah, yeah a yeah. show about bananas. Yeah, we're having a show about bananas. Okay. So are you saying that when we pay $42 for three boneless, skinless chicken breasts, yeah. we're de facto becoming producers of a movie? Absolutely. And also, I have to say, when you pay those $42, you are supporting Canadian writers who are, are going to get right these like uh, programs. Well, that's admirable. Yeah. 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 Admirable. Yeah. Exactly. What kind of shows? I mean, do you have anything in uh, production? Yeah. The streaming service? Uh, we're working on a show um, called Stranger Fortinos. <laughs> really? On. That's just what, what my son came up with that one, but yeah. Mm -hmm. That sounds like, like mind-blowing. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm excited about that, yeah. yeah. Stranger 14. <laughs> yeah, stra Stranger 14. Like, sort of like Stranger Things? Well, one could say, one could say. Okay. Hmm. Can you make a show for me about that rack that holds, um, like... Sour Patch Kids, Swedish Berries, Skittles, and berry-flavored Skittles and all that? Uh, yeah. Can I be in it? Um, uh, sure. And, and can I eat those candies as a character? Yeah, you can, but you will have to pay for them as well. Wow. All right. Uh, well, everything comes at a price. Well, is there anything right. else you're, you're doing, Galen? Well, we have a couple more shows we're working on in the okay. streaming service. Uh, we have... Uh, um, uh, <laughs> you got them written on your we, hand uh, We have uh, uh, <laughs> The Zare's Mandalorian. Okay. <laughs> uh, that was pretty cool. Yeah. Now, I'm... Uh, cards on the table. I'm a nerd, so I would love to see that show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Baby Yoda in Zayers. Oh, oh, that's not oh. a bad idea. Uh, 
uh, grams 200 of salami have will I? Okay. <laughs> I just made it up off the top of my head. Dude, you're good, man. Wow, Mike is a nerd. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, can I ask you something, Mr. Galen Weston? Yeah, go for it. Um, since we are deeply embedded uh, journalists, I want to ask you, have you ever uh, killed anybody? Yeah, about four people. <laughs> okay. At the same time, or was it different occasions? It was at the same time, yeah. Okay. How'd you kill him? Uh, with a gun. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I have, one of the, I, I have one of the legal guns in Canada, you know? The long ones, so yeah. Wow. It's a no-name, no-name long one. <laughs> no-name. Right, we're releasing in 2024. We're working on loosening up those laws a bit, you know? Nice. Wow. Yeah. You're different in real life than the sort of public persona you yeah. have as the yeah. sort of harmless, you know, neutered nerd. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you're kind of cool, I guess. And you know what? Okay. I can't believe no one brought this up, but, like, it kind of makes me upset, but I have feelings, too. I'm a human after all, right? And no one mentioned that I brought the scarf back. <laughs> Remember when Kiss got the makeup and then they brought the makeup back? Well, I thought, you know, you guys would love me after that. But I didn't realize you ever wore a scarf. Yeah, yeah, I did in 20... <laughs> 2006. Okay, well, sorry. We I forgot. brought back. I thought I'd, I guess standing ovation, but I guess fucking not. Hey, oh, hey okay. guys, do you think it's time to give Mr. West Jr. a standing ovation for bringing back the scarf? What do you say? Oh, come on! <laughs> GWJ, GWJ. Uh, on the count of three. One, two, three. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. Well, thank you for joining us, Galen. I mean, that will be six fifty. You know what? Let's make it an even seven. <laughs> how how much money do you have in your wallet right now, Galen Weston? You want me a check? Yeah. Yeah. Ch check in front of all these nice people. Tell us. Don't lie. Three million dollars. <laughs> wow. Mm. Yeah. What in the hell? Let's hear it for Mr. Well, Galen Weston Jr., you for everybody. Us, Galen. Thank you so much, boys. Enjoy your guests. Thank you, Galen. Wow. Oh, my God. I mean, this intro is almost as long as all our other intros. <laughs> has it been 49 minutes? <laughs> oh, I think it has. Look at all those people leaving. They're just getting a drink. Okay. Uh, laughing this hard makes a uh, person parched. Yeah. So finally, finally, should we get to the evil man for this this uh, for this episode? Oh, I bet these people they probably wouldn't even do you even want to hear who the subject is this week? <laughs> All right. All right, let's get into it then. So I I'm in charge of uh, this week's episode. Love a mic one. Now, it's a beautiful evening, a Thursday evening at the end of summer. We're all gathered here in this gorgeous theater for a live episode. So I thought it would be fun if tonight's subject was a real stinker we all love to hate, Slide. So it's, it's going to be Heinrich Himmler, the Reichsfuhrer of the SS. No, just joking. I'm just joking. That's too intense. Too intense. I picked... <laughs> I picked Please someone. Take a photo with. <laughs> I was sitting in front of a giant thing of Himmler. <laughs> okay, I guess. I, mean. I picked someone much worse than than Heinrich Himmler. Slide. It's the Property Brothers. Oh. No. Of course, with a guy like me, you know, I'm joking once more. I picked someone even worse than the Property Brothers. Slide, it is Don Henley from the Eagles. <laughs> now this uh, joke is getting old, so let's get to the actual subject of uh, the week. Slide, it's Kelsey Grammer. Woo! Kelsey. Have you guys heard of him? <laughs> I've heard of Kelsey. I love his restaurant, Kelsey's. Um, absolutely. Shit. I know who he is because I'm a huge fan of Night Court. 
<laughs> so uh, are you guys up for a Kelsey Grammer sort of uh, thing? All right. So um, <laughs> let's get going here. It's Kelsey Grammer. <laughs> Kelsey Grammer, get this. He's an American. American. He's an actor and producer from America, and he gained, gained fame for his role as psychiatrist Dr. Fraser Crane on Damn. the sitcoms Cheers and the show also called Fraser. You guys heard about that? But he is. Wait, was he Fraser on Cheers too? Yeah. What the? You know fuck? what? For yeah. my, for my money, I don't think anyone else would be better is better at playing Fraser than Kelsey. Grimmer. Well, we'll you know, get to that. Bond, that's a thing. There's James Bond. We'll get to that. Sean Connery. Apparently, they were gonna reboot it, and it was gonna be John Hamm as Fraser. Yeah. Oh yeah. my god. He's very good at comedy, John Hamm. Um. <laughs> so some people know Kelsey Grammer as Doctor Fraser Crane. But I'd say he's probably best known for playing the role of Slide, Lieutenant Commander <laughs> Thomas Tom Dodge in the film Down Periscope. Is that Rob Schneider? Yes, it is. <laughs> and who's that mentally <laughs> ill Holly. man <laughs> beside Rob Schneider? <laughs> <laughs> I see Harlan Williams, Lauren Holly, and a weird guy on the left. Uh, no, that guy, I I'm sure that guy made some more movies after this. <laughs> 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 and there's Jaws. <laughs> Jaws is there, yeah. Has anyone here seen the film Down Periscope? <laughs> All right. Nice. I've never seen it, to be honest. Um, now, Kelsey has received Oh, baby, I heard your uh, Periscope <laughs> calling. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Grammer has won so many awards, uh, five Emmys, three Golden Globes, a Screen Actors Guild Award, and a Tony. Now, well, then what the hell? That's not evil. Well, it's not, but we're going to learn about his, his life. Um, we, all, we all think we know who Kelsey Grammer is, but what do we really know? It might be time for a grammar lesson. <laughs> Next slide, please. <laughs> you can leave at any moment. Um, Mike wrote all this stuff just yeah. after leaving Sue's? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, did you guys know his name isn't just Kelsey Grammer? His name is what? Alan Kelsey Grammer. What the hell? And he was born on February 21st, 1955 in St. Thomas, the U.S. Virgin Islands. And this makes sense because the guy just oozes island vibes. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, yeah, some, reggae. Some people call him the white Bob Marley. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did you know he was from the Caribbean? I, I had no really idea. really did not. I would honestly never have guessed. I actually can... <laughs> I can picture him climbing a palm tree just to get a coconut. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at him just makes you relax, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, chill. Yeah. <laughs> we, you look at him and you hear, we be jamming. <laughs> I look into his eyes and I hear steel drums. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, his father, Frank, was a musician and restaurateur, hmm. and his mother, Sally, was a singer and actress, so he comes from a talented Caribbean family. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. awesome. Oh, that's um, cool. What were they shipwrecked on an island or something? <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. I didn't get that far in research, but um, he had. Uh, here's where we get into some some choppy waters in the Caribbean. Already, uh, okay. Yeah. Down Periscope. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So he had a, a younger sister and, and four half siblings from his father's second marriage. Now, Kelsey Grammer's early personal life was unbelievably tragic and marked with many grisly deaths of those close to him. Uh, had I known the specifics, possibly, I wouldn't have chosen him as a subject. <laughs> <laughs> but time was I'm limited. Sure we can have fun with it. Yeah. Yes. So um, his, his personal life has been shaped by many family tragedies. Following his parents' divorce, he... Uh, oh, oh, shit. He oh, left, my God. Yeah. You didn't... Yeah. Why'd you pick That's a guy really whose parents bad, were divorced? Dude. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know how triggering that is for me. He he comes from a broken Caribbean home, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, after his parents divorced, he was raised in New Jersey. Oh, oh yeah. my God! Rough. Yeah. So I already have so much empathy for him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I wonder if Bruce Springsteen ever wrote a song about Kelsey Grammer. 
Yeah, it was called Frasier in the USA. <laughs> well, I listen to my patients' problems all day, and I drive my truck all night. <laughs> um, so, uh, he, he moved to Florida after New Jersey, and check this out. In 1968, his uh, father, who he rarely saw, was shot to death in St. Thomas by a mentally ill cab driver. Right? Aren't they all? Yeah. <laughs> well, what are, well, you know. I don't. I, 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 I'm an Uber guy. I actually don't. Ag- oh, I thought you meant aren't all fathers shot to death. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I meant aren't all cab drivers mentally ill. I was trying to give some levity, you know. Oh, yeah. baby, I hear my father getting shot <laughs> by a mentally ill cab driver. <laughs> It's happening again. <laughs> <laughs> We're having fun. We're having oh fun with this. God. But I would like to say it's it's too bad there was no it's too bad there was no Caribbean. Papa, no! For the rest of my life I will have to be Fraser. <laughs> I will avenge you by being Fraser all the time. <laughs> I just think it's too bad there was no Caribbean better help back then. <laughs> or now. therapy blast. Yeah. <laughs> uh, apparently the cab driver... Now li- with Barry blast. <laughs> therapy Barry blast. The cab driver apparently lit a fire around the, his father's house to lure him out, and then when his father came out, he just shot him to death. What and this was hell? just random? It seems to be random, but yeah, I don't know. This is like hereditary. Anyway, you see why I was reluctant to do Kelsey Grammer now. <laughs> This is like yeah. hereditary. Yeah. And then the cab driver cut his own head off and floated <laughs> up into a treehouse. <laughs> Spoiler. Yeah. Kelsey, honestly, if you're listening, that's fucking crazy, man. Yeah, We're yeah. sorry. Yeah. But it, it gets worse. It gets worse, guys, and I'm so sorry. In 1975, his sister was kidnapped and murdered. Oh, my right? God. By the uh, same cab driver? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Arrest! The cab driver. <laughs> yeah. But then in 1980, his two teenage half-brothers died in a scuba diving accident and were eaten by sharks. <laughs> <laughs> but it's that's not true. So, James. That's James, not true. It is true. <laughs> James, do you remember when I was like, I'm not sure Kelsey Grammer is a good subject for evil men. <laughs> uh, and it would seem that in this episode... The evil man, so far, is God. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. Wow. Oh, baby, I hear my brother sinking (laughs) right down into some shark's mouths. (laughs) (laughs) They're eating again. Oh, my Lord. Damn, dude. His brothers are eaten by sharks? Yeah. And his father was lured to his death from a deranged cabbie? Yeah. Honestly, Kelsey, if you're listening, that's too much. Yeah, that is too much. Now that's as as uh, intense as it that's gets. That's crazy. From now on, it's just funny, silly stuff about Frasier. <laughs> <laughs> Should we keep going? <laughs> All right. Uh, next slide, please. The audience was laughing the hardest when it seemed like all his family members died <laughs> from voodoo curses. <laughs> <laughs> Can't top that. What in the fuck? <laughs> so, Chris. Looks like if David Letterman got cast as Buster Keaton. <laughs> <laughs> so, Kelsey, uh, he in Florida as a, a high school prep student. This was the beginning of him playing nerd ass, guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A Caribbean man playing a nerd? <laughs> Can it be done? Uh, in Florida, he de- as a teen, a traumatized teen, he developed a love of singing and dancing and acting. And uh, he began doing plays. He later won a scholarship to study at Juilliard in New York City. Not too shabby. Wow. Damn, dude. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's here for drama school. <laughs> well, uh, I'm glad this story has a happy ending. That was great, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So that's a picture of Kelsey in Juilliard in the 70s. Uh, nice. However, after his family tragedies, um, he started not going to classes and uh, drowning his sorrows in alcohol, and he was eventually expelled from Juilliard. Oh, shit. Uh, no, also right. notice in this picture, Diane Keaton is showing him an iPad. <laughs> 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 uh, 
proof of time travel. Yeah. Very nice. He's dressed to kill. Uh, I gotta say, on a personal note, similarly to Kelsey Grammer, I also didn't graduate from drama school. Yeah. I only oh. went to a bit of it, uh, but unlike him, my entire family wasn't murdered. Yeah. So. Well, yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you raise a good point. <laughs> so after he leaves Juilliard, he gets uh, he's working in theaters in San Diego and Minneapolis Ooh, as a you know, oh. legitimate theater actor. Big theater towns. Yeah, yeah. You haven't seen Hamlet unless you've seen it in San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and if Hamlet's playing in Minneapolis, go see Husker Du. (laughs) Deep cut. (laughs) Uh, The the damn guy made his Broadway debut in 1981 in Macbeth, playing the role of... He only played the role of Lennox. (laughs) Motherfucker debuted on Broadway as Lennox. I forget that play. Is Lennox an uptight nerd? (laughs) He's, uh, he's Macbeth's psychiatrist. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Remember those scenes? I gotta say, Macbeth, your wife is really bothering you, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Was that a good Kelsey Grammer? Yes. You do it, James. Do James think? is such a good impressionist. Uh, can you do it? All I can do is, Niles! <laughs> Dad, don't let the dog eat my fancy peanut butter. <laughs> Don't, don't let the dog eat... I can't do it. You do it, Mike. Who let the dogs out? That's not very good at all. <laughs> now, this is just before he becomes Frasier, right? So he's... Uh, his big Broadway... But the thing is, is, that's weird. I'm so sorry, Mike. But the thing is, that's weird. Is even though he's just doing these uh, theater gigs now, for somehow he still knew he was going to be Frasier. Yeah. Isn't that true? I think at his... The various uh, funerals he attended, he made eulogies, and at each of them he was like, I will avenge you by becoming Frasier. I'll cut that out of the episode. Then cut out a bunch of my stuff, too. (laughs) (laughs) And actually add some stuff for me. (laughs) I've been sort of quiet. So after the guy played Lennox in Macbeth, the famous role we love, he appeared in uh, uh, Othello on Broadway with James Earl Jones and Christopher Plummer, a Canadian boy. Oh. Two other guys who are up for the role of Frasier. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is Frasier. <laughs> Luke, I am your Frasier. <laughs> uh, next slide, please. So... What you're looking at is a, a slide of both Kelsey Grammer and Mandy Patinkin. Why? Because in 1983, nice. they starred together in a uh, demo version of the Stephen Sondheim musical Sunday in the Park with George. Now, audience, look at those pictures. Can you imagine the amount of alpha energy oozing off of a stage <laughs> if both Mandy Patinkin and Kelsey Grammer were performing? And I say this... Yeah. As a five foot eight uh, man with low testosterone. <laughs> well, I tell you what, they both have a hell of a lot of body hair. Reminds yeah. me of somebody over here. So Chris. they are, they are, they do have high testosterone. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I, uh, I have high testosterone. <laughs> <laughs> it drives me nuts. Well, <laughs> <laughs> you're always darn horny. Yeah, well, so are you, but you don't want everybody well, to know. Like I'm just saying, we're talking about you. You're hairy, you're hornier, and I bet you got a hairy dick. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, you're horny, I bet you've got a hairy dick. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like an old uh, Bob Newhart uh, album. <laughs> One of those phone calls, the yeah. one-way phone call. Uh, uh, you're horny. I bet you got a hairy dick. <laughs> yeah. You guys all love those old Bob Newhart one-way phone calls. <laughs> Woo! This audience is hip. They're from yeah. 1962. Now, in 1984, Kelsey Grammer first appeared as Dr. Fraser Crane Woo! in the NBC sitcom Cheers. Hmm. Woo! Although, hmm, 1984. 
Reminds me of George Orwell's predictions. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, you're right. Cheers came out the year that we lost all our freedom. <laughs> <laughs> Although, I have to say, the character Frasier, and I didn't know this, only started appearing in season three of Cheers. Ooh. What in the hell? Yeah. Right, he was Diane's boyfriend, I think. Was he initially? I think so. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Let's hear it for that. He um, was like Diane's uptight boyfriend. Yeah. Now, do you guys know how he got the role of Frasier? It's interesting, and it links to this picture on stage. Uh, his old Broadway friend, Mr. Patinkin, suggested him to the New York casting director of Cheers, uh, and they gave him a shot. He was only supposed to be in six episodes. He was so popular, he stayed on till the end of the run of Cheers. My that's God. Like the that's like the opposite of what happens to me on TV. <laughs> 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 so cool. <laughs> well, what's your character's name on Run the Burbs? I don't know. <laughs> well, maybe you'll get a spin off. Yeah, that and goes on for years and years. Yeah, and like Frasier. Yeah. Um, and maybe you'll play the character uh, like, Fraser, like, like Kelsey Grammer did for nearly 20 years. Oh, and, that'd be awesome. And he's about to play him for more years yeah, now. Yeah, that's awesome. That's Congrats, awesome. dude. Yeah. <laughs> Now, um, I gotta say, uh, next slide, please. Before Kelsey was cast as uh, Frasier, initially the role had been intended to go to John Lithgow. Did you guys Whoa. know this? I could see it. Now, can you Two imagine? Two actors that when you see them, you go, are they bald? <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine how different life today would have been if a slightly different fuddy-duddy had played Frasier? <laughs> we probably wouldn't be here. We'd all be speaking German. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, next slide, please. There they are! Let's hear it for Whoa. the cast of Frasier! These people are beautiful. Yeah. And they're wearing grunge clothes. <laughs> well, it's set in Seattle. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Really Bar -ne <laughs> <laughs> that is a grunge jacket. <laughs> Very nice. Hey, Fraser, I got tickets to see Mother Love Bone. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that episode? Yeah. Um, <laughs> hey, Fraser, I'm on heroin. I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> Hey, Frage, Courtney Love had sex with Eddie. <laughs> now, Dad, do not kill yourself in front of my date tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and stop playing Mud Honey on the piano. <laughs> Dad, how come you're up so late? Uh, I'm depressed because about Kurt Cobain. Because <laughs> about. <laughs> He's French-Canadian now. Well, in the writer's room, they'd always say, now remember, Frasier's dad talks dumber than Frasier. <laughs> <laughs> His father was a cop, like a retired cop on the show, right? Yeah, he, yeah. he was like a working class guy who had these two fuddy-duddy sons. Yeah. Yeah. We never got to meet their mom, or did we? She died in the show. In Let the me show. guess. <laughs> Eaten by sharks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, Kelsey, do you want... How, who should we get to play Frasier's mom? No. No. No! <laughs> there is no mother! <laughs> they had to compromise on him having one brother <laughs> on the show. It was in his contract. He was like, I'll start on the show as long as his stipulation is long as, as long as my brother is never... Uh, there's no episode where he's eaten by a shark. Yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> that was fun. Uh, next slide, please. So, even though he was riding high. There he is. Yeah. So he's riding high. I recognize high. Fraser's hands. Anywhere. Those are his hands, yeah. It's a, a jail cell with hands poking through. Um, he was making a lot of money. He was very popular on the show Cheers. Uh, yet... 
He couldn't shake his demons, and he was heavily using alcohol and drugs, uh, and he had a number of brushes with Johnny Law. So he was arrested three times between 1988 and 91 for drunk driving and cocaine possession, once receiving 30 days in jail. Uh, in and th- Cheers is going this whole time. Cheers I feel like that is would going. be a bigger deal now if you're always getting arrested for drinking and driving and you're on a sitcom. It, you don't hear about it as much these days, do you? It seems everyone has like a driver or an Uber now. I don't know. Because Chris, when you got busted for that, you got in huge <laughs> trouble, right? Yeah, but mostly just from my mom. <laughs> 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 hmm. <laughs> I, I got this... Uh, research here in 87 let me tell you something <clears throat> a, a mentally ill cab driver creates a fire ring around your house m- forcing your father out once he comes out you blast him away with a shotgun yeah, yeah. then your mother mm, brutally murdered no his sister or his, yeah. oh sister sorry Oh, then why didn't he have a mom on the show? (laughs) What the hell's your problem, dude? (laughs) Represent the ladies. Okay, so then... Okay, your sister... uh, Your brothers... Drown scuba diving. Um, I guess they didn't know how to scuba dive or whatever. (laughs) Then they sank into a shark's den. And were eaten alive. Yeah. All I'm saying is, and Kelsey, if you're listening, you're allowed to drink and drive and do cocaine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I yeah. understand. And hesh it through every neighborhood in Hollywood. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering, though, because he did like 14 days in jail in 1987. Imagine how his cellmates reacted when they're like, well, who's this guy? Like, what are you in for? Well, I, uh, I crashed my car into a lamppost. Uh, that's yeah. my impression. Yeah. <laughs> it was the most dreadful meal and uh, <laughs> lunch today. Yeah. Oh, boy. What are you in for? I uh, beckoned your father out of a fire pit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. It sounds like an episode of Frasier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm in jail with that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, fellas, if we're going to get along, we're going to need to have some agreements and rules. <laughs> um, also, the jail soiree is tonight, so everyone on your best behavior. <laughs> <laughs> Which one of you shredded my bow tie? <laughs> uh, in, in 1990, he was sentenced to uh, 90 days of house arrest for... Drinking and driving. Oh, that must have been awful to spend 90 days in a gigantic mansion (laughs) as well. Hmm. Anyway. Yeah, sounds like Howie Mandel's life. (laughs) Germaphobe. Oh, it's nice. It's nice. Well, we've seen his mansion on camera. Anyways. Next slide, please. (laughs) They were, yeah. Back there they are. Happier times. Uh, yeah, so 1993, the character Frasier got his own spin-off show called Frasier. Uh, and he, in addition to starring, he directed a bunch of episodes. Apparently they were originally going to call the show Craniac. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Craniac. <laughs> I don't want your laugh to start turning into it sound like you're patronizing me. Uh-huh. <laughs> 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 Craniac! <laughs> All right. <laughs> By 2000. No, it was really fucking good. My joke was Craniac. really good, dude. I'm with you. Maybe we'll release your Craniac joke as a single. <laughs> <laughs> Like those old Bob Newhart yeah. <laughs> bits. <laughs> uh, uh, a craniac. <laughs> so Frazier's rocking by 2001. He's making seven hundred thousand dollars per episode. Wow! Can you believe? Damn. That? Yeah. Won a ton of Emmys, uh, some Golden Globes, and uh, then it ended in 2004. But they, in February of 2021, it was announced that he's bringing back Frazier for a new Frazier. 
with only Perry Gilpin, Roz, and B.B. Newirth as Lilith returning, because I don't know if the rest of the cast like him, and some of them are dead. I, because, I mean, shocker, no Niles, no Daphne. You need Niles in you my HO. You need Niles. So he is, he is the, I think he's the funniest on the show. Am I right? I love Niles. So Niles' Niles. son. <laughs> Niles is, you'll like this as an uncle. Yeah. Niles' son, Frazier's nephew, is a character on the reboot. Oh, really? Yes. Interesting. So not, fr- not Frazier's son. Freddy. Frazier's son and Niles' oh, son. Oh, God. But not Niles'. And apparently uh, Niles' son is being played by the guy who played Elvis in that movie, <laughs> the Baz Luhrmann movie. <laughs> yeah, what's his name? Uh, what? Austin Butler. Austin Butler is playing his son. Now, uh, from Elvis to Niles' son. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's pretty good. Are you guys ready to hear about some dark stuff that happened during Frasier? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So Don't uh, tell me that cabbie got to Eddie. James, <laughs> next slide, please. <laughs> oh. So, why is his tongue sticking out like that? <laughs> so, did you guys know this? To the public, the cast of Frasier, they all got along in perfect harmony and stuff. But behind the scenes, Kelsey feuded with one particular co star. Of course, I'm talking about Moose, the dog actor who portrayed Eddie. So that's real, because on the show, he despised Eddie. So in real life, Kelsey yeah. Grammer like, really hated Moose, no way. the dog actor. So they would really fight? Like He would yell at him, and Eddie would bark at him? Yeah, Why is this trailer bigger than mine? <laughs> <laughs> How come he gets a doghouse and a woman to pet his head? <laughs> <laughs> He's allowed to shit outside. I'm shitting in a bathroom again. That's right. Moose gets to go outside. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll tell you the specifics of his uh, hatred of Moose. So his biggest complaint about working with Moose um, was that scenes with Eddie took longer to film because the dog is a dog. Right. Uh, he also hated... He hated... This is a grown man, by the way, with many problems. And he said that he hated when people said the dog was a good actor because, quote... He's not an actor. He's a dog. <laughs> fuck, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> he even wrote uh, a little bit about his relationship with Moose in his 1995 autobiography called So Far, which featured a preface written by Frazier. Oh, God. That's <laughs> yeah. so stupid. Anyway, here's what Kelsey Grammer wrote about Moose in his autobiography so far. It's widely rumored that I hate the dog, and it's kind of fun to perpetuate the myth. The truth is, I have nothing against Moose. The only difficulty I have is when people start believing he's an actor. (laughs) Acting to me is a craft, not a reflex. It takes years to master, and though it does have its rewards, the reward I seek is not a hot dog. It's cocaine. Moose does tricks. I memorize lines, say words, even walk around and stuff. I.e. tricks. Uh, But I don't need a trainer standing off camera gesticulating wildly and waving around a piece of meat to know where I'm supposed to look. Get get it together, man. Is he literally Frasier? Yeah. This is interesting. Moose, I read, uh, also received the most fan mail out of any Frasier cast member. What? He can't even do cocaine. <laughs> uh, can I get another tequila soda? If anyone, <laughs> if is it just audience or anyways? Don't worry about it. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Please. <laughs> now, um, what else? Just, uh, we're coming up to, to, we're gonna have a visit from someone very nasty in a few moments. But uh, we all know Kelsey Grammer, in addition to Frasier, he, he uh, did the voice of Sideshow Bob on The Simpsons. He even won an Emmy for that. Um, oh my God, I forgot he was Sideshow Bob. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's fucking awesome. Uh, I that was good. He, that really was, good. It was good. Uh, you know what? Sideshow Bob was good. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I once, not to brag or drop names, I once in Los Angeles attended a Simpsons episode table read that featured Sideshow Bob, so Kelsey Grammer was in the room. It was really cool. You were in the room with Kelsey? Yeah, and I made the mistake of walking up to him afterwards and going, you know, I think the dog Moose is a phenomenal actor. <laughs> he, he kicked me in the balls! Wow. Yeah. Great story. The hell? That's crazy. So... Back to some more dark times. Um, oh, no. Uh, next slide, please. That's the cover of his... Uh, that's the cover of his autobiography so far. Do you think we could rock that, like, jeans, blazer, white T-shirt look? It's he kind of looks squished. <laughs> that could be the file. Yeah. This is called Normcore. Wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah, if you get that book. So it it's, al- it's a book or it's an album? It's an, <laughs> it's an autobiography, but th- there's also a book on tape read by Kelsey Grammer. Why, are the, uh, why is there crayon all over it? <laughs> it's not a very good cover. <laughs> is that fair to say, audience? Yeah. 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 So uh, next slide, please. <laughs> uh, more dark times. So, despite the success of Frasier, super popular show, he's making so much money, his personal life remained out of fucking control. Now, this is not fun. In 1995, Kelsey Grammer was accused of sleeping with his nine-year-old daughter's 15-year-old babysitter. Hmm. Based on the uh, teenager's complaint that he had love with her at a hotel. He had sex with her. Had love with her. <laughs> so I had written down made love, and I tried, I confused... <laughs> Had love will travel. <laughs> uh, well, maybe that's not what they. The said. serious thing is, she, a teenager complained that he had sex with her in 1993 when she was 15 and he was 38. Mm. But so wait, you divide older. the number in half, add seven. No. Yeah, no, that's a no. Um, and we think that's wrong, right? Yes, yes. 100. percent That's gross. Wait, how old was he? 38. Yeah, that's Homer's crazy. Age. Yeah. <laughs> Homer's age, 38. Oh baby, I hear the babysitter calling. <laughs> Toss salad yeah. and scrambled eggs. Uh, now the the but jury. Honestly, yeah. this that sucks. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, that's so nice. Special delivery for Mr. Locke. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Whoa. Uh, now the the jury threw out the charges, saying that the woman had waited too long to like to file charges. She had waited one year. And they were like, oh, you waited too long. Uh, so we're throwing the case out. And then Kelsey Grammer released a statement saying that uh, the, the allegations had no basis. So that's no fun. Apparently he re- released a statement saying, I didn't want them to r- throw the case out. It would have been... Anyways, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> that's another thing that could have been edited out. <laughs> yeah. Behind the scenes, you know. I, uh, I feel like Kelsey wished that was edited out. Uh-huh. Yeah. Now, uh, yeah, drugs and alcohol continue to be a problem. In uh, September of 1996, Kelsey Grammer, alone in his vehicle, flipped his Dodge Viper sports car near his California home. Uh, He crawled out of the wreckage and was taken to a nearby hospital for treatment of a cut on his large forehead. And this is during Frasier? This is during Frasier. That's so crazy. The news called it a large forehead? (laughs) I mean, he's got some sort of, like, Frankenstein-type head. He does. It's fair to say. I would call it John Lithgow-esque. Yeah. (laughs) I can't imagine, like, the adventures at KACL 780 going on while this is happening behind the scenes. Yeah. Crashing his Viper? Yeah. Oh, thank you very much. He's... (laughs) (laughs) Another drink. This is like... This is like Miracle on 34th Street. It's like a bunch of... A parade of tequila sodas are going to be coming in. (laughs) All for Chris Locke. (laughs) There is a Santa Claus after all. Uh, After Kelsey flipped his Viper, he checked into rehab, and it seems to have stuck ever since, so let's hear it for that. You know what, though? Flipping your Viper, pretty cool. Like, that's Harrison Ford crashing a plane style. How would would Kelsey Grammer incorporate flipping a Viper into the Frasier theme song, Chris? (laughs) I don't want to do it anymore because the last one was so heinous. Who thinks Chris can get back on top with a Frasier song? Dr. Crane, don't flip your Viper again. (laughs) The Viper goes the other way around, Dr. Crane. 
case closed. <laughs> I'm not going. Yeah, that was great. See, James is key. He keeps it on the DL, but he can do some. You do a great Jane Leaves, James. Got to give it <laughs> to you. you. Thank you. Fun? Jane Leaves, you played uh, Daphne. Daphne, yeah. 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 Mm. yeah. Um, just before we get to our... <laughs> oh, you're going to do it again? No, no. Do I, it I, again. No, I, have no, I have nothing. I've, I haven't got anything to say, Dr. Crane. <laughs> My goodness. Yeah. Can you do a bull from the radio oh, station? I actually can. This is a very limited impression, so bear with me. Hey, uh, hey, Dr. Crane. Uh, I heard some crazy stuff is going on back at the back at the station. You know he talks. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Bulldog talks like he's about like pooing. Hey, Dr. Crane, you gotta help me. There's a crazy woman and she's after me. She wants to talk to me. You know. Thank I you. can do. I can do a good uh, John Mahoney, the father, Martin. Please, okay. please. All right, you guys want to hear it? All right. Uh, my ch- uh, my two sons are homosexuals. <laughs> Remember when he would say that on the show? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Um, <laughs> just before we get to our next guest, uh, his non fraser work uh, in 1996, freshly clean after dodging some underage sex charges, uh, he starred in uh, Down Periscope. Woo! He was in Toy Story 2 as Stinky Pete. And then, next slide, please. In 2006. Yes. He appeared as Beast in X-Men, The Last Stand. The Last Stand. Stand. That's the best. Yeah. (laughs) Of course, uh, a year before that. He looks great. He looks so nice. Uh, In 2005, he famously fell off... Fraser, you look terrible today. How would... Bill Chesterton? (laughs) Fraser. How do you think Daphne would react to seeing Beast? Oh, Master Crane. Someone needs a trip to the barber. Uh, of course, before he was Beast, the year before, he famously fell off Of course, stage. before he was Beast. <laughs> <laughs> All I was saying is he fell off the fucking stage at that uh, 50th anniversary oh, yeah! Disney thing. Oh, that was yeah, the best. Funny. Yeah. And what did he made a... Can you do the impression of the noise he made there? <laughs> I don't remember. Can you, Mike? I don't remember. No, no. But yeah, he fell off stage. It was like... Ugh! Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. He, he fell off stage and went, oh. <laughs> yeah. uh, next slide, please. Oh, baby. Oh. So who here remembers oh one of... Oh, my God. I'm so, so excited. After, after <laughs> Frasier ended, Kelsey Grammer has struggled to sort of find a TV show quite as popular. Uh, and this is a new one to me. In I need another show. Not Frasier, but something <laughs> with one guy's name right. still. <laughs> So this was a short-lived sitcom in 2009 called Hank about a rich guy from Wall Street who loses all his money and moves to a small town. Some might say that this idea was stolen by a Canadian man. Oh, shit. That's right, Dan Levy. You stole Schitt's Creek from Hank. (laughs) Anyway, um... Who here? Y'all, y'all Hank fans here tonight in the crowd? Woo! You like Hank? Now, this might be an unpopular opinion, but I happen to believe that Hank is a finer show than Frasier. <laughs> Mike, no way. I actually... Yeah. You guys think of Kelsey Grammer as Frasier. I genuinely think of him as Hank. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. And, you know, this is a controversial, but some people think that the Hank theme song sounds a little too much like another famous theme song from a show that Kelsey Grammer was on. Can, uh, do you guys want to hear the theme song from Hank? Maybe you'll understand what I'm talking about. Can we play the Hank theme song? Let's crank it. Hey baby, it's Hank. You know, the famous character Hank. You watch him on TV. <laughs> I can't believe it. I'm Hank. <laughs> Wait, Mike, wait. <laughs> Sounds oh. kind of similar. <laughs> wait, wait. Yeah. Oh, crap. Sorry. Uh, I think we have to hear that again. 
Can we hear that again, please? The theme song to Hank? Hey, baby, it's Hank. You know, the famous character Hank. You watch him on TV. <laughs> I can't believe it. I'm Hank. Hank. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Hearing it the second time, I think I do, I do hear it. It sounds there's levels to it. You hear yeah. different things every time. Yeah. It sounds a bit like the <laughs> Fraser theme. Yeah, that's what I, I was can't believe say. it. <laughs> I'm Hank. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no more tequila sodas. Uh. Check out Hank, y'all. Um, Oh, dear, I think it's time for us to be joined by our next nasty guest. Oh, oh crap. That one more evil man, eh? Okay. Oh, my uh, God. Yeah. So uh, are you guys ready to, to meet your next evil man here? Okay, last one. All right. Uh, evil man number two, would you please come out and join us? Oh, my God, a cloaked man. Whoa. Oh. Wow. What? What? Look at this evil man. Oh, you got to turn your mic on there. You have to turn it on the bottom. Bottom. Hang on. Here, let me just do this for you, sir. There you go. Don't worry. It's, a, it's complicated. Scary stuff. Yep. Hey, everybody. Scuds. Hello, evil man. Hey. It's good to see you. Good to see you. Who, uh, who the heck are you? Well, you know, people probably don't know my real name, which is Tepish. Okay. okay. Vlad Tepish. And uh, uh, because of certain uh, indiscretions, Vlad the Impaler is oh! what I'm probably... So Vlad, you're the hey, Vlad the hey, Impaler. Hey, listen, things happen. <laughs> Sometimes it's two, maybe three hundred. My, let's say twenty thousand people get uh, fall on the stick. Yeah, it's not something you usually associate with things happen. Impaling. Right. Yeah, people but get impaled every day. Yeah. Really? No. Not really. I don't think so. When someone is impaled, yeah. does the stake go in their ass and come out their mouth? This or common Chris. misconception. Yeah, come on, Chris. People yeah. say, hey, what do I want to do this at home? How, where do I stick the, the point? They say, obviously, there's a hole right there. Yeah. In your ass. The ass is genuinely You're a gonna hole. go in at the wrong angle and it's just gonna come up right the, by uh, the belly button <laughs> and the guy flop over. Yeah. Like some you got a sausage on a stick. Yeah. So how do you get your guys you know to not that? flop? Yeah, how do you get the, here you go. Yeah. You stick it you, there's a place. We call you I believe now it's called the taint. Yes. yes. Yeah, what did you used to call it? Perennium. Right, right. Oh, the scientific name. Yeah, we had Latin back then. Yeah. In we all spoke Latin. It was 14th yeah. century, 15th century. Everybody yeah. was good at that. You know, in Orangeville, some people did call it a choda. Honestly, in Etobicoke, some people called it the numpty. <laughs> I'm an old school taint guy, gotta say. <laughs> Well, the perennium was the technical name. We yeah. called it old pokey. That's <laughs> where you yeah. poke it. Yeah. So it's basically you go right there. You maybe take a little, I don't know, like you take your thumb and you s smear a bit of the, in the charcoal and the fire that's there. You um, do a little X. <laughs> like Ash Wednesday? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you right. put a charcoal oh, X on the go. choda? <laughs> then put it in, fellas. And they basically you drop on the, the uh, people call them victims. I call them opponents <laughs> of my regime. 
But uh, you just you let the uh, gravity do the work for you. Oh, I you know, understand. And it goes right up and down through mm. all the viscera. You hope you're lucky, and you have a little style. Come right out there, up out of your mouth. The little stick. Go, whoa, and then you, yeah, everybody has a good day. So, you, so you've mastered impaling people like as an art at this point. Yeah. You know what? If you're going to do something, bring a little extra. Do a little more. Make it something people remember. Certainly people remember <laughs> somebody getting impaled. Hard to forget. That, but I, when you add a little, whoa, pizzazz, you know? Just a little chef kiss. Right. People say, ah, that was a good it's, impale. It's like when you get a cocktail, and okay, it's a plain old cocktail, but sometimes the little details, the orange rind or the something. The human like eye. Okay. Floating in your goblet. <laughs> okay, well. So the human eye on, a, on the end of the. Uh, Here's the, one time. Yeah. Mm. This guy, he was, these two guys come, right? Mm. Uh, this time, the Turks, you know, they <laughs> don't, we don't get along. Oh. So, uh, there's many reasons. Shout out Ennis Esmer, Turkish. <laughs> yes, certainly. Yeah. But so, would you Im impale Ennis Esmer if you saw him? Depends. <laughs> On what uh, I'm feeling. Uh, yeah. You have to be in the mood to impale somebody. You can't just go, oh, yes, I must do that. No, yeah. uh, he's here. Right. It's like so me. sometimes oh. people say, hey, Vlad, impale this person, and you're not I in say, the mood, and you say, I can't get it up tonight. Yeah. <laughs> you don't tell Vlad when to impale. Vlad decides <laughs> when to impale. Oh. Okay. Very but nice. you say... These Turk, uh, these guys come from the, the, the bay, which is like the, uh, the Turk king, whatever you call him now. Yeah. I don't know. Ottoman, whatever guy. Sultan. They're wearing, yeah, Sultan, exactly. Hmm. They made the raisins after him. <laughs> <laughs> they have the, the hats, the, the wrap around the things, right? The turbines. Okay. So. They say, uh, we're not going to take these off uh, when we're here. <laughs> okay. And I say, oh, yeah? Is that what you think? <laughs> and they say, yeah, we're not. Uh, this, is part of the, this is part of the furniture. We don't move this for nobody. Okay. So I say, okay. And uh, it's kind of impaling. But I get a guy <laughs> with a big mallet. And he uh, drives three spikes in top of every one of their heads so okay. they can't take the fucking turbans off. My even God. if they wanted to. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> Irony, I guess. Yep, yeah. it's Irony. fun. Yeah. It's a little bit Vlad, of fun. Vlad, I, I can took it and, you know, twisted it up and down. That's what I do. <laughs> Vlad, I could listen to your stories all night long. <laughs> now, but the show's over? <laughs> no. But can I oh. ask, what, <laughs> what the heck are you doing in downtown Toronto? Uh, just, uh, you know, picking up a few tips from the premier. He's asked He's me to come in and do kind of a impaling kind of seminar. What would you do, Vlad, right. in this situation? I say, impale. <laughs> it's what you do. It's with no, no choice. You got to do it. Go right for it. Right. Yeah. Wow. But is it true that uh, impaling's not just all you do? You no. do some other stuff on the side, and you you're know, everybody think that's all you do. You know, you got the, his Vlad the Impaler. That's it. But they never called me Vlad the Windsurfer, <laughs> which is that what I get a great deal of joy. Oh, really? Yep. From oh, that surfer. Wow. Yeah, Caspian Sea. You know, out there at the brisk winds. <laughs> <laughs> People say, hey, get a load of Vlad, the Impaler. I say, fuck you. <laughs> what am I doing now? Windsurfing. Yeah, exactly. I do, uh, I like collage. <laughs> I, uh, it's not as popular now, like scrapbooking, all that shit. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, it used to be big, but now you just do it all on the, the thing. There's a good crafts festival in Toronto. Oh, yeah. So. 
Well, now, they may drop Vl- in. Vlad, are you afraid that AI will ruin art? Uh, ruin it? <laughs> it's already shit. <laughs> so how bad can it get? I mean, what do you talk about? I, uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, sure, you know, how... You know, you gotta say, AI, come up with show that features a smart guy who is fucked up and leaves and goes to small town after losing all his money. <laughs> Could you give me that? 40 or 50 times? That's uh, the way it works, you know? Do you think AI c- is gonna ruin impaling men? No. Oh, that's a good question. You know what? You can never find a, a computer or mine. Uh, well, some you're kinda... saying that because it's it's your thing. Yeah, oh, sure. You know, I, I listen. I I understand people. Uh, you know, they're on strike. They walk around. They say, "Oh, you can't replace me with, you know, Play-Doh uh, monkey." <laughs> <laughs> I get it, but. Um, Yeah, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's like, but it's the true, thing. like he's saying true shit. Like, yeah, yeah, you can't impu- You know, you you can't do that. But I go, hey, uh, sure, you could have like uh, a, a computer range of impalings, but <laughs> <laughs> the heart's missing. The right? heart of yeah. the mis- right, the, the, right. the soul of the situation. Yeah. When you have like a whole family. Uh, just uh, slowly sliding down a sharpened <laughs> pole, yeah. looking at each other like, oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> what's going to happen next? <laughs> you know what's happening right now. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing going to, no yeah. computer going to say, hey, yeah. oh, that's, I could do that better. I hope, yeah. I hope yeah. Silicon Valley is listening to what you're saying. I yeah. hope yeah. someone Silicon, is listening. Silicon Valley needs to take a few more tips from Vlad the Impaler. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, the thing is, uh, yeah, I do lots of good things. Uh, you know, I do the, what the else? collaging. I do the, you know, the windsurf. Yeah. Do you do cook? A lot of, I impaled a lot of people for charity. Oh, as well. Okay. That's actually To brutal. raise money uh, for many good causes. Like... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> to teach young kids how to impale <laughs> other people. Yeah, they right. they're on the street. They have nothing. They don't yeah. know what to do. What am I going to do? So you'll show them how life? to impale other kids they, for free. Yeah. Take a look. Here, what I'm doing now on Amazon as well. You can go and buy my website, uh, Vlad, <laughs> Vlad, Vlad. Which is also the name of my Broadway musical. I'm working on that now. <laughs> but uh, there you get your home impalement kit. Uh, and it comes with stand-up cutout of me looking on. <laughs> so, <laughs> the eyes move and follow you with the magnet. Right? Oh, cool. You put on the magnetized belt. So they try belt. to make you proud. <laughs> you wear a make so magnet on your belt, <laughs> and my eyes go, oh, 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 until <laughs> you're on the, the stake. You, you know? Yeah. It's kind of like assisted suicide, but someone's got to make money out of that. So you're, yeah. that is nice. You're doing charity. You're giving out free do-it-yourself home impalement Not kits free. to poor children from to the poor streets. Ch- okay, okay, yeah. The yeah, poor fairness. children. Not free? Not free oh, for okay. the general public. Mm. But for these kids, yes, because oh. I have a heart. Uh, I, yeah. You know, I give. I give a lot. Yeah. yeah. yeah have you, you ever impaled what? a guy and uh. then once he slides all the way down the stake or the pike or whatever it is, mm-hmm. uh, his heart is stuck on the top of the stake? Have you ever pulled Valentine's that off? Valentine's Day, maybe. Valentine's Day, maybe? <laughs> Are you some kind of fucking animal? <laughs> yeah. You, why would you even think of something like that? That's disgusting. I think it would look cool. Yeah, it probably would be cool. <laughs> but Here's also, a, you know, what? what I like to do sometimes just for the fun, you know, is a joke for everybody else. Sometimes, I see, I killed over 20,000 uh, families. Uh, all at once to frighten the Turkish army, it was successful. 
<laughs> but uh, I just had a big feast, <laughs> all surrounded by them, all these spiked <laughs> people. <laughs> And that's where the you know Vlad, uh, people say, "Oh, Vlad Dracul, you're uh, yeah. you're, you're the, the vampire." Oh, yeah. This is not true, right? You, I did Dracula, th they say, is based on you. Yeah, it, well, this fucking guy. <laughs> you sound like you're from New York City. I don't, you know, I spend a lot of time there. There's a large Transylvanian community, but this fucking guy, Bram Stoker, the Irish fuck. Just pluck a name out of the fucking hat and say, oh, Vlad the, the Dracul, yeah. You know, and uh, what was it? Oh, yeah, so the, this the reason is blood sometimes trickle down and off someone's foot if they're sticking out onto your food. And you can't throw it away. It's just it's polite to eat it. Right. So that's where it come from. But so if you're eating a meal underneath a newly impaled man, his yeah. blood might go into your food, yeah. and you would, using manners, politely eat that food still, sure, I'd ask and then him to stop people it. would say, oh, you're drinking blood, and you're Dracula. Yeah, I asked, what first I do <laughs> is say, would you kindly stop dripping on my food, <laughs> dying man? Or woman, or baby, whatever it is. <laughs> Babies don't understand. You can't control them. <laughs> but yes. So, the fun thing I was thinking of, you know, this is a guy. What we one time, we take real short steak, right? Real short. Oh, it's okay. like way down, like short steak, and the guy goes, "Oh, this is gonna be a fucking joke." Yeah, yeah if you were gonna get, get away with that, that walk going, off yeah. that son of a bitch. Yeah, you'd think you were lucky if you got the short one. Oh. Yeah. So he gets a stick it up there, <laughs> the first little bit, and he says, oh, I could deal with this. We dug a pit, right? <laughs> Underneath with the guys who kept jacking up the steak. So it keeps it okay. coming and getting longer. Okay. Okay. And the guy's like, fuck! <laughs> Nice. What oh. the fuck is happening? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was a good time. That's a good one. Oh, that my God. Really good. That was funny. We laughed. Holy shit. Yeah. That was funnier than the nails in the head, I'll tell yeah. you that. Yeah. yeah. We laughed I'll at say. that, too. That I guess comedy time. changes throughout the ages. No, yeah. I don't think so. <laughs> well, no. Yeah. I seen the biodome with Polly Shore. Yeah. Not much change. Oh, fair enough. It's fair like enough. being impaled yeah. watching that. Yeah. Anything yeah. with Rob Schneider. Down Periscope. Yeah. Holy shit. Do you like Kelsey Grammer? Oh, what? The, he's a fucking asshole. Am well, I right? Yeah. You know, Get you can't that. forgive someone just because, you know, oh, although I wish you would forgive me. <laughs> You can't forgive someone all of their feelings because, you know, oh, he's so good, he's funny. Right. Oh, I like him. Right. Yeah. Well you, said, know? you know? Yeah. yeah. Hitler. <laughs> yeah. Hitler, mm -hmm. incredible ice skater. Is that really? Right? Yeah. Really? Didn't know that. Yeah. So, well, well yeah. I mean, I think. <laughs> don't forgive him! No! Oh, no, you no, don't. I mean, no, no, no. It's not even. We're but you can't pick that. and choose. You what you're saying is it's complicated. It's a complicated. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. can't just, no one is all one thing. Yeah. You know, you're not all yeah. impaler. You're an impaler and a windsurfer. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I think on we've learned most of your facts. Well, I, I'm happy to leave any time. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry I came out <laughs> in the first place after sitting on my ass back there for a fucking hour listening to Kelsey Grammer's bullshit life. He's not even particularly evil. He's just a fucking dick. Yeah. I wish I'd fucking... <laughs> Put a burning ring around this fucking house. <laughs> and he run out, the dad, onto a big fucking spike. <laughs>
that I put in there. Okay? <laughs> Fuck that guy. Oh my god. Wow. I Doesn't wait. take a fucking mentally ill taxi driver <laughs> to fuck up a family. <laughs> okay? Just a little bit of imagination <laughs> and a little dedication. <laughs> Vlad Thank the you, Impaler. Vlad Taylor. Thank you, Vlad. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Wow. <laughs> very good. Wow, amazing. Thank you, Vlad the Impaler. Thank you. Don't fucking patronize me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> Wow. Whoa, wow, that was quite an experience. I thought we were going to get impaled there, boys. Oh, good point. Yeah. It's crazy how angry an e evil man can get. <laughs> well, should we get to the end of Kelsey's beautiful life? Yeah, let's race. How are you guys do doing now? You all right? How are you guys doing up top? You all right? Woo. All right. Who wants there to hear is. about Kelsey Grammer's chaotic love life? <laughs> Woo! All right. We still have Hank there. Uh, and that'll stay there for a little bit. But yeah, he's been just, I'll, I'll try and get, get through this. Yeah. He's been married four times. Again, not evil. Just some would say he's unlucky in love. Um, but here is a quote from his uh, autobiography so far. that will give you a little glimpse into how he thinks about romance. Now, he wrote this in a book that had at least one editor, probably two. Uh, he got to look at the proofs before it was submitted for publication. And he signed off on it, so he wrote this. Nice girls made me really nervous, claustrophobic, but broken women, women in pain, women looking to be fixed. Ah, for these women, the doctor was in. That's in his book. Yes. He, to be clear, he didn't not put that in his book. It's like how wolves hunt the limping caribou. <laughs> so he was married uh, his first marriage was to a dance instructor they got divorced his second marriage was to a stripper uh, and their marriage lasted one year uh, and uh, oh baby I married a stripper <laughs> it didn't last very long <laughs> well when she was when his second wife was three months pregnant he filed for annulment and evicted her from their home and he claimed that she was abusive and fired a gun at him. Anyway. Yeah, but I would too. Fair and enough. I'm not disparaging strippers. I would strip and fire a gun at Frazier. <laughs> it it seems fun. reasonable yeah. to me. It actually seems like a good life. Yeah. <laughs> uh, next slide, please. So this was his Getting butt naked and shooting Frazier? <laughs> This is uh, his Kelsey Graham with his third wife, the dancer and model Camille Donatachi, who also starred in Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. You guys seen that? Yeah. Uh, this marriage ended in a very nasty, prolonged, and very public fight. So the reason they got divorced was uh, because while she was shooting Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, he cheated on her with a flight attendant while he was in New York City doing a Broadway play. <laughs> oh, my God. I've, I've seen an episode of Real Housewives where she's on it, and Frasier makes a cameo, and he's like, Frasier. Or <laughs> Kelsey. You know what? He's fucking Frasier. Yeah, Deal he's with Frasier. it. he's Frasier. He's not not Frasier. But he's like... Um, I'm Hank, everybody. <laughs> Everyone forgets about Hank. In the show... Uh, <laughs> do we have the Hank song <laughs> queued up? Can we hear Hank again? It's the best thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> hey, baby, it's Hank. You know the famous character Hank. You watch him on TV. <laughs> I can't believe it. I'm Hank. Hank. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> I'm Hank. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> you guys want to hear the details of his divorce to Camille from Real Housewives? Let's yeah. do it. So the, the, guys, <laughs> the guy was rich as hell, didn't sign a prenup, and he ended up paying $30 million. Oh, uh, baby. Yeah. 
<laughs> oh baby, that sucks. <laughs> now, oh baby, <laughs> the divorce, the public divorce, like fight was really nasty. And at one point, Camille in the press said that Kelsey was trying to like humiliate him. She was like, he likes to cross dress. And then Kelsey Grammer was interviewed by Oprah Winfrey, and he denied that he wore women's clothes. I wasn't cross-dressing. I was dressed as the Beast. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, when he would dress as the Beast for X Men: The Last Stand, he would have actually he would get shit in his butt fur. <laughs> 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 yeah, like, cut, cut. Uh, somebody attend to Kelsey. <laughs> I'm trying to do the acting, the method. Uh, could we get to the next slide, please? The beast shit, doesn't he? <laughs> um, so this is marriage number four to wifey number four, whose name is Katie Wall. She was the flight attendant that he cheated on. Uh, and she's the daughter of a famous English football player, apparently. Can I just say that he looks really happy in every photo? So I don't yeah. know. Yeah. <laughs> great. He gives great face and he serves cunt. <laughs> I think. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> um, <laughs> this couple were married two weeks after the dissolution of his previous marriage. And uh, this is interesting. The next slide. He has, Kelsey Grammer has his fourth wife's name tattooed on his crotch. This is a picture of Kelsey Grammer getting a tattoo that he got on his crotch, his wife's name, as a reminder to prevent him from cheating. Oh, what the hell? That's what he said on Jay Leno. So he'd be like about to get it on with a new woman and like, oh, like, oh no, on. my wife's. Uh, can we see the next slide, please? It shows the that's, tattoo. Uh, that's my... So, Ew. there is his wife, Katie's name, and he showed this on Jay Leno's Tonight Show. K-A-Y-T-E also. But don't you think, ladies, if Kelsey Grammer pulled down his pants and showed you that, that you just couldn't resist just jumping on top of him? Stop and going to just about kiss it. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Who here thinks that's a sexy photo and sexy tattoo? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Kate is spelled K-A-Y-T-E. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, we're almost done. I just want to tell you about uh, Kelsey Grammer's political beliefs. Would you believe it? They're not. What? They're not good. Uh, next slide, please. <laughs> next slide. So, Kelsey Grammer has labeled Washington politicians a bunch of clowns. He's also that rare thing, a Hollywood Republican. And in 2017, he revealed that he voted for Donald Trump for president of the United States of America. I don't know if you'll mention it, Mike, but I remember as well, there's a really embarrassing uh, promo for a right-wing stand-up comedy night that he was kind of the, um, the creator of. And he's <laughs> yeah. like, it's time there was some voices from the other side of the aisle. Or whatever. Oh, it's really lame. Maybe he should uh, help out the Royal Comedy Theater. <laughs> across the street, Just Across yes. the street. Here's some freedom of speech comedy. Um, <laughs> he's complained that he feels that his right-wing beliefs make him sort of uh, toxic in Hollywood, and he blames being a Republican and Hollywood's liberal elite for not giving him an Emmy for the show Boss, <laughs> where he played the mayor of Chicago. I've never seen Boss. It's definitely that that makes him seem toxic and not the tattoo of Katie <laughs> on his dick. <laughs> <laughs> now, he says he's pro-choice, but in 2015, he, his wife posted this picture of him wearing uh, the T-shirt from an anti-choice group called Abort 73, and his shirt, because you can't see it if you're listening, it says, would it bother us more if they used guns, abort73.com? Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and say, yes, it would bother me more <laughs> if abortions were performed with guns. <laughs> So, <laughs> you got me, T-shirt. Yeah. You got me. <laughs> yeah. What a cool shirt, though, for a nice guy. Everyone in Washington is a clown. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> well, there he is. Um, okay. I wonder, though, if they're going to weave Kelsey Grammer's anti-choice views into the Frasier reboot. You right. Think maybe there'll be an episode where he and uh, Eddie gets uh, another lady dog 
pregnant, pregnant? and they have a debate yeah. over if they have it. Or where Kelsey and then he holds a gun <laughs> yeah. to the lady dog's vagina and said, "Would you like this better?" Yeah, could happen. Let's all have. To, we'll have to wait till October to see. <laughs> Obviously, Niles didn't yeah. get an abortion because his son's on the show, right? Yeah, it's true. It's true. Niles and yeah. Daphne didn't get an abortion. Oh, it was Daphne's <laughs> kid. Seems to be. D- yeah. Did Frasier end with Daphne having Niles' as kid? Yeah. Really? Yeah. It what got, was, it got less good when Niles and yeah. Daphne got together, right? That what did tension? Daphne say when her kid was born? <laughs> oh, look, Niles, it's a little you. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't have an abortion, Niles. <laughs> 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 and that was the episode, the final episode. Uh, Daphne has a baby, and Fraser bombs an abortion clinic. <laughs> very nice. Yeah, yeah. It's very ended perfectly. Uh, in 2019, Kelsey Grammer uh, issued a statement. I don't know how, uh, claiming that he supported Brexit. <laughs> and that, <laughs> that must have been what put the Leave vote over the top, right? As a man who's <laughs> pretended to be British all his life. <laughs> <laughs> I support Brexit. <laughs> That's how you said it, Mike. Brexit. Now, we're at the very last fact about Kelsey before we bring out the evilometer. Are you guys ready to hear the last amazing fact? <laughs> Woo! All right, so Kelsey Grammer, believe it or not, he's been involved in not one but two sex tape scandals in his lifetime. Oh, no. Right? I didn't know about this. Uh, in 1998, he sued someone for stealing a sex tape from his house where he was having sex with a woman. Uh, and then in 2010, his wife, during their divorce dispute, she threatened to release a sex tape that they made together during the divorce. And neither tape ever saw the light of day. So uh, don't bother Googling them. <laughs> but guess who managed to get a still shot from one of wow. these supposedly unseen Kelsey Grammer Why? sex tapes. Who are you, Mr. Skin? His name is Michael Balazzo. Are you guys ready to see a still image from a Kelsey Grammer sex tape? Here we go. Next slide, please. Next slide. Please don't tell anyone you saw it. I got it illegally, but there he is. <laughs> having, there he is having sex with a woman. Right? Yeah. Uh, do you want to describe it for the people at home? Or? Well, you go ahead. You go well, ahead. it's the blue beast, and he's with a woman, and something's happening to him. Well, say it more specifically. Well, I guess he's... It's the beast the from b- X-Men The Last Stand is... Cock is out, right? And it's jizzing onto a naked woman who's lying on but a bed. Or and the woman is it yellow though? Is it urine? <laughs> oh, oh, he's peeing on. Sorry, her. Mike wanted me to <laughs> correct that it's actually piss. Yeah. <laughs> do 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> so he's tossing some scrambled eggs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, so onto a salad. <laughs> Well, there we have it. That's the tragic and unbelievable story of Kelsey Grammer. Amazing. Wow. Good work, Mike. Brilliant, Mike. Well done. Thanks. Very good. Thank you. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, now, before we, uh, before we bring out the Evilometer, we do have a raffle to address. Everyone get your raffle oh, tickets yeah. out. Can we get Jackie Pirico back out here if she's there? Get your tickets oh. out. Is the microphone there? Woo! Jackie, good to see you. Thank you so much for hosting. Oh, my God. It was so fun. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Now, this great, is so exciting. Great show. Thank you. Um, so you have the yeast yes. here. and uh, Jackie, did you see the still from the Kelsey Grammer sex tape? I saw, okay, I saw, oh, my God. <laughs> no, I didn't. I could only see him from back there. Oh, God. Adobe, st- oh, I that's see. That's a watermark, yeah. <laughs> Jackie, that's real. But I didn't see the tattoo. Oh, yeah. we'll show it to you later. You can show me in private. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, Jackie, do you have you um, randomly selected a number? Yes. Wait for that now. This is so cool. This is exciting. Get your this tickets ready. You could be going home. Your, your life is about ready. to change. If you are a Patreonio and you're on our Discord, you know that this has been in the works for quite a long time now. Oh, yes. Yeah. I'm just getting 
like wafts of, of nutritional yeast it's got coming a up strong from the smell. bag. Yeah, yeah. It's got a really strong I do love smell. It. But it kind of tastes like a cheese topping on the popcorn. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's umami. It's umami yummy. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Okay, shall I? Yes. Do it. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Mike's like, yes, Jackie. Okay. Six, four, four. Oh, already some disappointed. Six, four, four. Six, zero. Two, nine, four. Six, four, four. Six, zero, two, nine, four. Well. <laughs> Well, oh shit. You read it to make sure I didn't fuck up. Yeah, you did it right. Um, okay, we're, I guess. Uh, now what? 644 Is there anybody 644 Are these just. Not even that. 6 7? Okay. All right. Did you take Jackie. What, did you, what did you say? What did you say? No, no. What, did, what number did you say? Yeah, <laughs> say your number. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, yes, he's got it. Jackie, yeah, thank you. Sir, thank you. Thank you. And you know what? He got it, he got it. And... Oh, yeah, sir, congratulations. Congratulations on the yeast. And Mike's taking a photo. Give him the microphone, Mike. Give him the microphone. I'd rather okay. not. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> hey, uh, also, we have a guest here who's here from Chicago. Aaron, are you in the down there? Aaron, this is also for you, for coming, driving for Chicago. Come to all Flew three. all the way from Chicago. All three of our shows. Oh, That's true. so awesome. Congratulations. Well, Jack, you can hang for our last I'll thing hang? if you okay, want. Hang. Thanks for driving from Chicago to get yeast. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. From us. <laughs> Try that tonight. <laughs> I, I hate it uh, if you got busted crossing the border <laughs> with a bag of powder. I swear, it's oregano. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, should we, is it time to bring out the evilometer? <laughs> evilometer, come on out. Now you, this is exciting because you you don't see him on the podcast. Come on out, Evilometer. Come on out, Evilometer. Oh, he's shy because there's so many people here. It's okay. It's okay. Come on. Come on. It's all right. Come on. <laughs> all right. Evilometer, check out. Oh. He's a bit. Uh, all right. Um, all right, Evilometer, come over it's here. It's okay. Come there over beside go. Mike. Yeah. yeah. Come over, over beside me. Yeah. You're all right. It's safe. It's okay. He's a little nervous. Uh. He's got a tan line, so, I have to say. If you listen to the show, you know this is the time yeah, where Yeah, it looks we like Evilometer went to Hanlon's Beach. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, it's okay. Yeah, come come right here, right here. So These are just some people that like the thing we do. <laughs> so, Mike, do you want to go first? Yeah. This is the part of the show where we rate the subject of the episode, and uh, we'll, we'll have Jackie even participate as well. Yeah. But, yeah. Jackie... There's a certain way to input your score. Oh, no. We'll show uh, you. So I'm going to give Kelsey Grammer, he had a rough start in life. It seems like a bit of a jerk, though, even so. I'll give, uh, I'll give Kelsey Grammer a 6.8. Okay. <laughs> it's in there. Uh, okay, so I, the whole show, I got to admit, I've been feeling guilty about making such good jokes about his family's death. <laughs> That I feel like any acting out on his part for the rest of his life, I don't know, his politics are shitty, but for the, for the most part, he's a regular Hollywood ding-dong, uh, and he went through a lot at an early age. I'm giving him a two. I like wow. it. Yeah, like I'm giving it. him a two. I'll just In put it here. Put number on the evilometer Boop. machine. <laughs> you know what? Two. If you're talking about a jerk -a meter douchey guy a meter. Right. He's high. He's probably an eight plus. But in reality, yeah, he's probably a 1.6. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> now Jackie, it's up to Jackie. Jackie, it's Jackie's turn. <laughs> and also, you don't have to do it if you don't want to. <laughs> That's true. It does seem... Michael's always looking out Jackie, for me. Jackie, you have I'll to... I'll do it. You have to do it. Okay, I'll do it. <laughs> 
Okay, Frasier. Okay, Kelsey. <laughs> um, okay. Well, the thing is that it's hard. I didn't. I didn't know I was going to be doing this. Sorry. Did that go off? It did, but. Uh, oh. Did yours oh. go off? Oh no. Oh. Yeah, they did. <laughs> <laughs> well. So I don't have to do this. Well, I guess. <laughs> well, what's your What's your score? And then we'll get out of here. Really quickly, I think he's really shitty because of the babysitter thing and everything. Mm. But then I was like, but then the, and the anti-choice. I was like, that's really bad. That's really bad. But then I'm like, maybe he comes by it honestly because he just doesn't want any more people to kill. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna, you know what? It evens, it all evens out. If I'm getting a look. <laughs> I'm gonna give it a five. Well. <laughs>